about what percentage of the area under the curve of the normal distribution represents z-scores that are more than 2.66 standard deviations from the mean. Alrighty, let's break this down a little bit. First of all, it says we're looking for a percentage. And whenever we're looking for a percentage, whether it be a probability or an area or a percentage, the way it's worded, all three of those things, probability, percentage, area, means we're looking for an area. It also says area right here. Um, now, there's two things that you normally are asked to do when it comes to normal distributions, either you're looking for an area or you're looking for a boundary. And clearly here we are looking for an area. Now using Excel formula, norm.dist is done whenever you are looking for a left area. We have um, a page in our reference packet uh, when it comes to using Excel for normal distributions. You have for objective one, when you're finding a probability area, from a known boundary or boundaries, you can do, <clears throat> you'll usually be doing one of these three scenarios or some combination of them. And so here we need to start uh, sketching this out to know which scenario we have. Now it says 2.66 standard deviations from the mean. So that would be uh, any values or any z-scores that are greater than 2.66 because remember, uh, z-scores tell you how many standard deviations away from the mean you are. So this would be negative 2.66 as a starting point and anything farther away, anything less than negative 2.66 would be more than 2.66 standard deviations from the mean. Also positive 2.66 would be more than 2.66 standard deviations from the mean. So we're looking for these two areas. And so since this is symmetric, uh, that means both of these areas will be equal to each other. And that means we really only need to find one of them. And the easiest one to find will be this one since the norm.dist function is already set up to give you left areas. So I'm going to use norm.dist and I'm going to put in the z-score of negative 2.66 followed by the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one because um, we're dealing with z-scores, that means the mean is zero and the standard deviation of one, and true for cumulative, or you can just type in a one. And so that will get us one of the two tails areas. So norm.dist, negative 2.66, zero, comma, one, comma, one. Okay, so just make sure you separate everything with commas, and then press enter. And this is the area of one of the tails, each of the tails actually, they're both equal to 0 0.00391, both of them. Okay, and that is a probability. And the total probability would be adding those two together, or in other words, multiplying that one value by two. And then we want to turn this into a percentage since we were asked what percentage rather than what's the probability. So to turn this into a percentage, we can multiply it by 100. And then we see that we have an answer 0.78141. And then we want to just make sure that we round it appropriately as needed. Make sure you're reading the directions of the question very closely. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed and it was helpful for you. Let's also look at how we can do this with just the z-score table. So we will look up negative 2.66 in the negative z-score table in our reference packet. And notice that the negative z-score table is set up to give left probabilities and all of those are inside the body of the table. So looking up the z-score in the outside of the table, we looked up negative 2.60 in the first column, and then also negative 0.06 in the top row. And then finding the intersection of this column and row, we get our answer 0 0.0039. Now, if remember, that's just the left tail. So we still need to double it. So notice that if we take 0 0.0039 times two, we get 0 0.0078. So either one of these 
would be a good final answer. And um, just make sure you're always paying attention to any directions on rounding or how to get your answer. And you should be all set.